from around the world. This is the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated G for general audiences. And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, now the news. Picture Corporation presents News on Parade. The frigid waters of Lake Ontario are perilous indeed for winter travelers, but no threat of ice can deter those most persistent of aquatic commuters, the bootleggers. The repeal of prohibition undertaken by our American neighbors has not ended the mighty demand for contraband liquor of all stripes. With most breweries and distilleries on the Yankee side of the border driven out of business by the long dry spell, racketeers continue to fill the void. And in spite of the risk of imprisonment or worse, a seemingly endless flotilla of crafts of every stripe, some high-powered, others barely seaworthy, undertake the perilous crossing to slake America's thirst. Not since the time of the privateers has such a game of cat and mouse been fought at sea. And with their booty hidden on tiny islands in the no-man's land of the mighty lake's icy waters, many a rum runner has thwarted the attempts of the police and coast guards of both nations to enforce the rule of law. Come on, boys. Get the lead out. It's freezing out here. Sure, sure. But once we get the stockpile open, we'll be warm soon enough. You mean we'll all have a snort? Sure, Diggs. That's a good one. Come on, you bozos. I ain't standing around here all day while you crack wise. Pull them doors open. Pretty slick, boss. Using what's left of this old lighthouse to store the barrels in. Sure. They get used to seeing us go by in an empty boat. They've stopped us often enough. We pick up the goods here near the end of the run, and it's a nice short trip. With a nice fat payoff. So why don't nobody ever get wise? Cause, dummy, this place burned down 20 years ago, and it ain't never been used since. This island's so small it ain't even on most charts. Odds are, nobody but us even knows it's here. Sounds like somebody knows. That's a woman. Woman's voice calls. Shut up. It can't be. It's just the wind. That ain't no wind. Whoever she is, she could squeal on the whole operation. But how'd she get out here? That's what I'd like to know. It's impossible. Maybe you should go out there and tell her that. No, not me. I ain't going nowhere. That ain't a real woman. That's a spook. A banshee. Shut up, a banshee. And you call yourself a hood. Yeah. Jinx. Yeah. Get out there. Yeah? Yeah. And take my gat. While you're out there, put a couple of bullets in our guest's skull just to prove to Mrs. Diggs here that it ain't no banshee. Sure. Sure thing, boss. Whatever you say. <laughs> Banshees. What? Uh, I mean, uh, hello? Somebody out here? Help me. Uh, yeah. Lady. Hello? I'm coming to help you all right. Where are you? I'm over here. Over here. Can you see me? Hello? I can't hardly hear you, much less see you. Hello? Over here. This way. Follow the sound of my voice. Uh, yeah. Listen. <laughs> You ain't by any chance a, b- a banshee, is ya? Banshee? You should be so lucky. The flying squirrel! Take this! Ah! Thank you, Jinx. I will. You don't mind if I handle it with gloves, do ya? 
I think the cops on both sides of the border might like to run it past their unsolved cases file. Ah, let go! You're breaking my arm! No. This <laughs> is breaking your arm. See how that was different from the other thing? Please. Please, let me go. This is a novel line. Why should I? I'll go straight. I, I swear. G- give me a second chance. And those people you peddle your poison to, Jinx. Do you give them a second chance? If they promise to never touch another drop, do you give them their eyesight back? Please. Go. <laughs> I don't like it. Something must be keeping Jinx. Maybe she was a banshee, like There ain't no such thing. You seem awful touchy about it. Nix. What do you call me? Raymond Nix. It's your name, isn't it? Or didn't you think anyone working for you knew it? What's the matter with you, Diggs? You've been acting funny since we got off that boat. Maybe it's just my conscience bothering me. You ever feel like that, Nix? Cut it out. I told you before, no real names on the job. Oh, sure. Maybe we should move some of these barrels while we wait for Jinx. Sure. Sure, let's get started. Uh, Hang on. Something wrong? These barrels, they're... They're frozen solid. Well, sure. It's cold enough out on this lake. Why shouldn't they be? I guess... I just didn't think it ever got cold enough to freeze something with this much antifreeze in it. So you knew. What's that? You knew that this room was full of poison. What's wrong with you, Diggs? Of course I knew. We all knew. What, you think we can make a buck otherwise? What's wrong with you? Maybe it's just my conscience, Nix. Or maybe it's yours. You... You're not Diggs. What have you done with him? Look up, Nix. Up in the rafters. What? It... It's impossible. It's... It's Diggs. Hanging by his ankles. Then who are... Do you really have to ask? That mask. You... You're the Red Panda. Don't look for your gun. You gave it to Jinx, remember? Jinx? Jinx, get back in here! Jinx can't come to the phone right now. Can I take a message? No. How... We found your little island getaway and planned a special surprise. Was he surprised? Astounded. But, but... uh, I took the place of Diggs almost the moment he stepped off the boat. Where is the liquor? Oh, we moved all that, just in case you came by before we were ready. These barrels are full of water. Ice, actually. Your barrels are on the other side of the island, near the end of the fuse. What fuse? The one attached to this detonator. No! (gasps) Squirrel, I think that was the wrong detonator. Oh, you're right. Silly me. I just blew up their boat. The boat? Now that was the liquor exploding. Where is my head today? And now, Raymond Nix, you will write a full confession... You will name names. You will outline the whole organization and the part you and your confederates played in it. You will give us the whole stinking lot on a platter. Why should I? Because the only boat off this island is ours. And it's a real nice one, too. And so, thanks to the quick thinking of local law enforcement, the bootlegging ring is smashed. And now, from the seedy underworld to the rarefied world of high society and high finance. At a time when the darkening storm of the international economic emergency has served to increase man's inhumanity to man, one man has stood up to be counted, leading the vanguard of decency and generosity. Philip Quincy Mitchell, perhaps the wealthiest man in Canada, announced this week that he has directed his financial officers to throw the full weight of his enormous personal and business fortune behind the daunting task of easing and suffering of those less fortunate across this country who have been brought to rack and ruin by this crippling depression. For many generations, through both hard work and enormous good fortune, The Mitchell clan has been blessed with great wealth and power. 
I realize now that there is no finer way for me to use that power, no better way to spend that wealth in the time remaining to me, than to see those blessings shared with as many people as possible. No! No! You can't have it! It's mine! It's all mine! <laughs> no! You can't take it away from me! All that I have, all that I have worked so hard for! <laughs> Are you there? Did... did I get you? <laughs> no! No, you won't take me, Red Panda! And you'll never take my beautiful money! There! I fooled you, masked man! This vault is impregnable! Try as you might, you could burn the house down around it, and it would still stand untouched! It can only be opened from within! Nothing, not even you, can separate Philip Quincy Mitchell from his money! No. The two of you can be entombed here in the darkness, Philip Quincy Mitchell. You! How did you get in here? It's impossible! We specialize in the impossible, Mr. Mitchell. Or haven't you heard? Where is that light? It's not working? It's easier to talk in the darkness. Don't you think, Mitchell? <sighs> Give me the pop gun, Gramps. Oh! <gasps> How dare you strike me! When you're slapped, you'll take it and like it! Oh! I'll have you both arrested! This is my house, my money! I am the most powerful man in the country! And yet here you are, <laughs> whimpering in the darkness, locked in a vault with the two people you fear the most. You flatter yourself! Why, you rotten... No, Squirrel. He's right. Of course I am! We know everything, Mitchell. We know about the loans you made to those in your employ. And then anyone desperate enough or foolish enough to trust you. We know about the outrageous interest. The properties you foreclosed unjustly. The enforcers who break thumbs and legs in your name. We know about every dime and every dollar that you've taken from those that could spare neither. All in the name of a little more money. You don't understand. The stock market crashed. I lost everything. Everything my father and his father and his father had built. It was all gone. I had to get it back. It didn't matter how. You can never understand. I understand that when people like you say they've lost everything, they still have more than any ordinary person will see in a lifetime. But that didn't stop you from taking it all. How many lives did you destroy? How many children went hungry so you could stack your money to the ceiling? How many men took their own lives rather than continue under your yoke? No! Yes, Philip Quincy Mitchell. And those are the ones that you truly fear. The souls of those whom you have murdered with your greed. As surely as if you had pulled the trigger on them yourself. The women... The children, listen. You can hear them. No, make it stop. Make the voices stop. They are more than voices. You can see them. No. You can see them melting from the darkness. You can see the pain you caused in their eyes. And for once in your life, Mitchell... You are powerless to turn away. No! No! Make them go away! It's my money! Mine! You can't have it. There's only enough... Only enough for me! You really are a craven little miser, aren't you? Want I should soften him up a little, boss? There's no point. The sickness he has goes far deeper than his body. A man who values his own creature comfort above his fellow man is low. But a man like this, who has destroyed thousands of lives to make money he never means to spend, he would endure any amount of physical pain. Yes, you're beaten! No, Mitchell, you are. You see, those apparitions were just a taste. My mind is in yours. If I will it, you will see those specters every moment of every day for the rest of your life. No, no, I couldn't bear it. Awake, 
Asleep still, they will call to you. If you pulled out your eyes, you would still see them. No, no, please. There is only one other way. Anything, anything, rather than face that. You're about to become the most generous man in the world, Philip. You're about to give it all away with a smile and a glad heart. You'll be the most beloved man in the country. There'll be a state funeral when you die. The ordinary men and women of the city will line up a week to pay their last respects. That's how generous you're about to get. But I'm going to leave a tiny piece of the old Philip Quincy Mitchell buried... Powerless, looking on in horror at your generosity. No, no, that's too cruel. He doesn't actually get a say in this, does he? No. Good night, Mitchell. No. No! Congratulations, Mr. Mitchell. You're an inspiration to us all. You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Dakota Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. A strange drama unfolded this week high overhead as the USS Melchior, a new design of experimental dirigible pioneered by the United States Navy, drifted far off course during a rare series of winter maneuvers. The Melchior, kept aloft by 7 million cubic feet of the inert gas helium, is considered to be both more efficient and safer than the German Zeppelins, which are kept aloft with hydrogen gas. Only our American cousins possess sufficient supplies of helium gas to attempt such an experiment. Onlookers on this side of the border were startled by the sight of the great Skyliner, seemingly out of control and making for Toronto at enormous speed. Navy spokesmen were unavailable for comment. Representatives of the state-sponsored German Air Passenger Lines remarked that the safest ships in the air are still proudly made in Germany. Uh, how's that access hatch coming, boss? Not having second thoughts, are you? I, uh, started having second thoughts when you said you were going to land the auto gyro on top of a Zeppelin. <laughs> I'm up to 33rd thoughts now. Aren't you the one with the retractable gliding membranes? Even I can't glide over 20 miles of open lake. <sighs> Got it. Come on. Explain one thing to me. Name it. How come a man who can't drive a car half a block without maiming a tree can fly an auto gyro like that? There's nothing up here to hit. Interesting point. Come on. These walkways should lead us through the ship's skeleton to the command deck. Red Panda, get down! What is it? There's somebody up ahead. All in black. Didn't get a good look, but he saw us. I'm sure of that. There were two more creeping up through the shadows. They don't look much like sailors. They certainly don't. Reckon they're getting ready for a bushwhack? I should say. We don't have time for this. I say we make time. I think I can get just enough clearance to glide around behind them. You distract them and try not to get shot. Thanks. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> nice job. They never saw that coming. No, but they saw you coming and they never fired a shot. I noticed that. I think I know why. No guns? No guns. It's a good reason. And another puzzle. Throwing knives, a variety of concussive weapons, but no guns. And no ID. Mm. Curiouser and curiouser. They might have playmates throughout the superstructure. At least now we know this wasn't an accident. When airships spin out of control and just happen to fly against the prevailing winds at top speed, it's a good bet. Especially when they're aimed right at a city. Come on. We've got to get to the control deck. We'll be over Toronto in less than an hour. All clear. Come on. All clear is right. Where's the crew? I don't understand this. Either the Navy boys should still be here, 
Or there should be a crew of baddies in their place. Or we should be out of control, but everything seems to indicate this airship is still headed right for Toronto. And there's no way we should have made it all the way here without meeting more than three of our friends in black. Mm, they certainly seem to have taken control by stealth rather than brute force. But where's the flight crew? This was to have been a short experimental flight. There wouldn't have been more than a skeleton crew on board. They may have been incapacitated or even killed. In any case, we don't have time to find them now. Why not? This ship wouldn't be making right for Toronto if something wasn't going to happen when it got there. Hmm. Watch the door. I'm going to have a peek under the console. Do you know what you're looking for? I'm uh, kind of hoping I'll know it when I see it. You just figure out why a Zeppelin full of helium is being hijacked by three stooges in black pajamas with no firepower. Squirrel, that's it. You're kidding, right? I wish I wasn't. If you were going to take over a military vehicle, can you think of one good reason not to bring any guns? No. Firepower? I see where you're going, boss, but helium doesn't explode. Right. And therefore... This ship is full of hydrogen, isn't it? That'd be my guess. But why? The Americans refused to sell helium in sufficient quantities to the Germans for their airliners. Perhaps someone is trying to call the safety of these new American ships into question. And they're flying it to Canada to blow it up? They might be trying to drive a wedge between our people and the Americans, or have another score to settle. Or they might just be insane. Are you basing that on anything in particular? The only thing I can find under here that isn't stamped U.S. Navy is some kind of radio receiver unit wired right into the navigational controls. A remote control device? Why haven't you removed it? Because it's also wired into a nice big bomb. Can you defuse it? Maybe. But if whoever's flying this baby figures out what I'm trying to do, it'd be a squirrel fricassee a million times over. I'm not feeling overwhelmed by options here. Should we detonate it over the lake? I have two problems with that. The flight crew might still be on board. And, if we're right about the motives, it'd still be half a win for whoever set this up. Right. Right. So now what? Stay here. I'll get to the radio room and try and set up a counter signal to overwhelm the remote control. Ah, and once we've broken the signal, we can defuse the bomb. That's the idea. Can you steer this thing? <laughs> I can drive anything, remember? Better hustle. I can see the old hometown coming up fast on the horizon. Red Panda, Flying Squirrel, on behalf of the United States Navy, I want to thank you for your help. Unofficially, of course. Glad to do it, Captain. Has your flight crew recovered? Yes, and they send their thanks as well. Though we're very concerned about security after this. Don't be too hard on your boys. It was just supposed to be a test flight. And one without much strategic value at that. This sort of senseless attack is impossible to defend against. I hope you're able to extract some useful information from the prisoners. Now that's the strangest matter of all. Apparently when they realized they had failed, each of them took a cyanide capsule rather than be captured. What? This is lunacy. Without more information on that remote control system... Oh, we know all about that. The scientists they stole it from came forward just before you landed. Oh, yes? Yes. He was in the country for a symposium at the university. Apparently, he was overcome and his invention stolen. In the country? You don't think... The what? His name wouldn't be Friedrich von Schlitz, would it? Why, yes. How the devil did you know that? It's a very long story, Captain, but you must arrest that man. If you have some proof that he's involved. No, no proof. At least nothing we can explain. Well, then I'm afraid there's nothing I can do. But, Captain, this had to be planned months in advance. The goons with the cyanide capsules, the switched gas tanks. Von Schlitz had to be in on it. And we have some reason to believe he may harbor ill feelings towards our city... This would be an opportunity for him to avenge two perceived slights toward Germany in one fell swoop. Professor von Schlitz is here as a guest of our government. I can't just arrest him without tangible proof. There'd be a, an international incident. Sooner or later, Captain. 
I'm afraid that is inevitable. And so the Melchior, new queen of the skies, returns to her home base for more fine-tuning. And we know we'll be seeing much more of her very soon. And very soon we'll be bringing you more news from home and around the world as the Radiogram News Picture Corporation brings you more news on parade. Kid? Kid, are you up here? I'm, uh, over here, boss. Where? Can't see a thing now that the picture's stopped. Come to the sound of my voice. The sound of my voice. Say, this hypnosis thing is easy. Hilarious. Here's your popcorn. Since when are you blind as a bat in the dark? No mask, no night vision. Yeah, but we're the only ones sitting in the balcony. Come to think of it, we are the only ones sitting in the balcony. Kit Baxter, behave yourself. Really? Do you want the popcorn or not? Yes, boss. <laughs> Did I miss anything? Not a thing. Whatever happened to pictures that take you out of everyday life? Don't worry. The cartoon's coming up next. Oh, yeah. That'll help. <laughs> And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, episode 27, Now the News, was written and directed by Greg Taylor, with original music by Andrea Lyons, and featured the vocal talents of Jack Ward, Stephen Burley, Christopher Mott, Scott Moyle, Michael Booth, Clarissa de Nederlanden, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. Hi, I'm Persephone Rose, executive producer for Postal Roach and the creator of Emperor Pigs. I'm a huge fan of audio drama, and if you're listening to this right now, I've got a sneaking suspicion you might be too. So make sure your headphones are plugged in tight, because you're going to want to hear this. From July 24th through the 26th in 2020, producers, directors, composers, writers, actors, technicians, and fans of audio drama are gathering together for the world's first international modern audio drama convention in Halifax, Nova Scotia. This is going to be amazing. If you like panels, there's going to be panels. Workshops, they've got them. Studio sessions, swag events, live performances... And most importantly, all your favorite creators are going to be there. You can get all the details and purchase your tickets online at www.madcon.com. That's M-A-D hyphen C-O-N dot com. See you at MadCon. <laughs>